He's a better defender. I think as an all-round package, what you're looking for. I think Trent's better than every one of them. Sorry, I'm um, Trippy's better. Than no, that, that's wow, the that's, that's going out. out. <laughs> that's it. That's, it. that's oh, going I'll out. Re I'll rephrase <laughs> that. No, 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 no. That's making the edit. <laughs> Hello, my name's Laurie Woods, that's Alan Shearer, and that's Jamie Carragher, just in case you didn't recognise the two of them. Hi, lads. <laughs> this is Sport Bibles 11, and um, we are going to get ready to pick our formation, our team, ahead of the first World Cup game, England against Iran. The way it's set out at the moment, obviously, this is how we think Gareth Southgate is going to set out the England side. Three at the back. Whether or not you love it or you hate it, it's for the Iran team. So, would you like to disagree with the formation, first of all? Yeah, I wouldn't play three at the back. Why? Well, we haven't got three good enough defenders, so I would go with two. Um, that's that's that would be our main problem. Um, so I would go with with four on a on a sitting midfield. Um, and let's face it, whatever we whatever he plays or we play, three or four at the back, we should beat Iran. Fingers crossed. Famous last words. Jamie? Yeah, I agree with Alan. I would go to a back four because of the opposition. I know the manager has been playing a back three. It's caused a lot of discussion, but he normally plays a back three in big games and tough games. You go back to the Euros, I think he did it against Germany and in the final against Italy. So I actually think the fact he's been playing three at the back of late, especially against Italy and Germany lately, is he's almost getting ready for the knockout rounds in some ways. And I just think it wouldn't be the right signal to, sense, uh, to set out yeah, back three in that first game, so back four for me. It's a very, very short turnaround, isn't it? From the last Premier League game to the first game in the World Cup for, for all teams, but for everyone that's involved in the Premier League, it's not much of a, a break. I think it's a joke. I mean, the fact that the World Cup has is, is gone to Qatar, the fact that it's in the middle of the season, I think there's going to be so many players who are going to miss out on a tournament. That is something that you wait for every four years, obviously. And there's something that, you know, players dream of when they're a kid of playing in. And there's going to be injuries, not just in the Premier League, right across the world because there's such a short turnaround and it might only be a, a 10 day, two week injury and you're going to miss a World Cup. Mm. OK, boys, I'm going to allow you guys to now just move your formation because you had a back four, you had one sitting, didn't you? Yep. Would you like to agree on that? Yes. yes. Everything is going fairly well right now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It feels a little bit odd that you two are agreeing mm -hmm. on everything, but fine. Having it sort of like that? Yeah. Yes. Are we happy? Yeah. OK, guys, so we're going to move on now and start to pick the players that are going to make this formation up for you against Iran, first game of the World Cup. We're going to start with right back because it feels like actually that's probably had the most discussion around it as we head into it. So, Alan, I'm going to let you go first on this one. Who would be your number one choice, bearing in mind it's for that first game? If, if he's fit, it would be Kyle Walker. Um, the, the debate about, uh, around the right back is, is, is huge if, if everyone's fit because we've, we've got so many talented players in that, uh, in that position. All offer uh, different things, um, but because of what he's done in the past, because of where he plays, who he plays for, um, then I would probably, I would start with Kyle Walker in that right back position. That might surprise a few people just with your Newcastle there's, a, there's an if coming in. If he's not fit, I would have, I, before I go any further, I would have Trippier in my team. If he's not going to be right back, I'd have him left You'd back. You'd have him left back, I would definitely have him in my team. Yeah. If, if Walker's not fit, I would have him ahead of anyone else in the right back position. We've seen Gareth play him at left back, but we're going to do the right back position for now. So obviously you know what's coming at left back from, from Alan. What do you think for you? Who's your right back? I agree with Alan in terms of Kyle Walker. I think it would have been for me Reese James, but I don't think he's going to make it. I think Kyle Walker is going to be touch and go. Mm. But in, if we're talking about the Iran game and getting on the ball and trying to break someone down, putting balls in, playing clever through passes, I think it has to be Trent. Right. What, what about if England, if they play Trent and England win 4 or 5 nil, Trent sets three up, then how are you going to leave them out with the next game or the one after that? It's not my job. <laughs> <laughs> but also, on, on that topic, we did see the, the group stages in the Euros, we did see Gareth almost play a different team defensively, the centre-backs, to, to once we got into the knockout stages. So it's almost like, thanks very much, now mm. it's getting serious. See you later. Well, well that, that could be what he does with, with, with a Kyle Walker. Mm. And maybe fingers crossed to Reese James, if he could make it. That's what he did to Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire wasn't ready for the Euros. I think Tyrone Ming started the yeah. tournament. But in terms of the Iran game, I like Trippi, I think he's a, he's a good player. But the thing of, you know, I think he played left wing back as well in the Euros. Yeah. I don't see the left wing back thing uh, with Kieran Trippi. I think as a right back, 
he's a very good Premier League player, steady player. He's done better in an English shirt, I would say, than Trent Alexander-Arnold. But I think in terms of doing something a little bit special, a little bit different against opposition who are going to be deep and negative, I think the players have to pick up his Trent. I don't, I, don't, I don't see a great deal of difference between Trent and Trippier in terms of set pieces. He's fantastic at them. He scored last season, this season. Set one up um, or set a few up um, assists-wise crosses. He's a better defender. I think as an all-round package, what you're looking for. I think Trent's better than every one of them. Sorry, I'm um, tripping. I agree. Now that, that's wow, the that's, that's going out. out. <laughs> that's it. That's, it. that's going I'll out. Re I'll rephrase <laughs> that. No, no, no. That's making the edit. <laughs> cut, cut quickly. Okay, guys. So we're both agreeing that Walker's going to be a right back. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Tony, you worried me for a We've second. We've just argued now. over Trent, and none of us have picked him. <laughs> Literally, yeah. He starts a conversation, though, doesn't he? But he'll be on the plane for you, right? He'll be in the squad for sure for both of you. Trent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. There you go. So there's our first choice. It's a combined eleven for both of you, so you can argue it out. I haven't said this actually yet, but where you don't agree with it, I get to make the deciding vote. It gives me a lot of power. Mm. Yeah. Here we go. So the next position that I want you guys to pick is um, your two centre backs. Now, this again is a big discussion. I mean, to be honest, there's discussions all over the pitch, or at least we hope so, to make this a good video. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, I'm going to let you go first here because you know this position. So tell me who would be your number one pick at centre back. It's not easy. I think before the number one pick would always be Harry Maguire for Gareth Southgate and what he's done in tournaments for England. But on the back of what happened in the last couple of internationals, how it's gone for him at Manchester United, I think it's really difficult to, to pick him. I think John Stones goes in there. But again, John Stones hasn't really been playing centre-back at Man City, he's been playing full-back. And again, he's just come back from injury. So I think John Stones becomes the first pick. And then I think the one to go alongside him could be absolutely anybody. Really? I think it could be any. You, you, you could make a case for Eric, uh, Eric Dyer. Yeah. You could look at Connor Cody. These are the players who will be in the squad. Harry Maguire. I'm not sure on, on, on what we saw in the last two internationals, really. Uh, but what else can Gareth Southgate do? I think you're right in terms of, I wanted your thoughts, obviously, about in a back four that you'd feel like Stone's probably the more comfortable. The other ones, a lot of the other options beside him that you see are more comfortable in a back three, maybe. Yeah. Who is he your number one as well? Stones Stone? is definitely my, my number one. Um, Harry has done incredibly well. Harry Maguire has done incredibly well for England um, over, over recent tournaments. And... We know Gareth likes to go to his favourites who have who have served him well in the past and, and uh, Harry Maguire has, but if, you, if you're not playing club football, it's a huge, huge gamble and a huge ask of the individual to be thrown into a World Cup, the biggest tournament ever, without having any games behind you. Would you also be a bit concerned with the way that his form has dropped off about where his head is at the moment and, and yeah. confidence with yeah. that big spotlight of a World Cup. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I know more than most that uh, form, particularly for England, shouldn't really count because leading up to Euro 96, I hadn't scored for England for two years. Wow, I didn't even know that. So I was it's, a child. Uh, you're just showing your age, that's <laughs> Sorry, right. I was showing up. too little <laughs> me anyway, I'm looking old. Old. <laughs> <laughs> so then. <then. laughs> yeah, um, I hadn't scored for two years for England. So I understand the clamour and the urge to leave people out in terms of when you're talking of, of about form. I was still scoring for, for Blackburn, but um, I just think if you're not, if you're not playing uh, club football, to then be thrust into the biggest competition of them all in the World Cup, irrespective of, of the opposition. What's I the think option is a huge, Who else can you yeah, put in? Well, well, let's put him down because you both agree yeah. on John Stones. And now let's look at who's going to play beside him. So, do you want me to, I mean, you've got Eric Dyer, you've got Mark Gay here as well, Crystal Palace, Gomez, one of your boys, Connor Cody, who, actually, Connor Cody, is Connor there, Cody is, there is playing. Is, Connor Cody right now is playing as well or better than every other English centre-back. Uh, because I think, to be fair, I think the other one you put alongside it was maybe Eric Dyer in the middle of that back three for Conte. But uh, what Connor Cody's done for Everton, Alongside Tarkovsky, he's almost changed the, the narrative around that club and, yeah. and how they're seen. But I then look at Stones and Conor Cody and in some ways feels two similar players. There's no real sort of powerhouse, if you like. So you think of early set pieces, mm. they're both good on the ball, read the game really well. So I think that might go against Conor. Uh, and that when you read those names out, I can't help but still go back to Maguire. 
It's, Which, it's difficult not to because of yeah. what he's done for England in tournaments. But again, as you said, if he played the sort of the focus and the attention on him, if he made a poor game if, or made a mistake. He, you, you mentioned the two friendlies. If he had played well in those friendlies, oh, then we, yeah. there would be no debate. Yeah. yeah. But because of his yes. performance and what he did, giving the ball away, the penalty away, the backlash after that and the criticism for him personally, I think has affected his confidence hugely. Yeah. And you're not, you're not, I don't care what anyone says, you're not seeing the same player when he's out on the, on, on the pitch and his confidence has been affected. OK, Jay, so we need a final answer from you. Who is your other centre-back? Eric Dyer. And you, Alan? I, I, find it very, I find it difficult to argue against that as much as I'd like to. Um, with the <laughs> options that we've had. I mean, one, one other name I'd like to put in is, is Dan Byrne. I mean, yes. Kara's mentioned Cody and Tarkowski at uh, Everton, the former good partnership. Um, I, if you're talking those two, then I'd have to chuck his name in because he's been sensational for Newcastle, whether it's been left-back or centre-half, um, but I mentioned Harry Maguire and how tough it is for him to, to play, so I would have to go along with Dyer as well. So Eric Dyer is our next centre-back. This is great, guys. You are getting on really well, mm. aren't you? And I know that makes you angry. <laughs> just, just that makes you angry. OK, um, we're going to move further up now and we're going to go to the front three because I imagine at this position, which you know very well, I don't think there's going to be much complaint about who's going to start up here. Can I hazard a guess at Harry Kane? Yes. Yeah. Do we Definitely. need to? Do we need uh, to? One world-class player at this moment. Uh, I would add. I would add another one in there. I would have Foden in there. I think he's world class as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, Harry Kane is is as good as there is around it in terms of putting the ball in the back of the net. There's, there's no one better than him. And if yeah. if this England team are going to do well, he has to be firing and he has to put the ball in the back of the net. Okay, so Harry Kane's going to go down there. Yeah. And um, I just wondered whether or not you feel like he's England's best number nine in history. <laughs> mm. <laughs> he's good. But he's but he's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> not as good as Rooney. Uh, <laughs> where would you put him in that list then? Um, Third, <laughs> by the sounds of it. Rooney would be the top for me. I mean, he's. Uh, I was. A, he, I don't think he could be anything but a huge fan of uh, of Rooney. I mean, he'll get his, his the record is. But he scored more goals, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just think what what Rooney gave us in terms of everything and could do a little bit different, could also put the ball on the back of the net. Um, but he's, I mean, how can you not admire what he's done and what he's going to do? Because he's, he's got a good few years left. What's the differences between him and yourself rather than Rooney? He would link up play more in terms of coming deeper, certainly more in the last two or three years. He's done that. Um, he needs to do it a little bit more as well because he's going to get my record if he stays right up top and, get, <laughs> and gets, the, uh, gets all those goals. That's that, I think that's his difference. He can play, he can play in the ten role as well as the nine role. I didn't like doing. I didn't like doing that. Does the fact that he hasn't won a trophy does that change your view of him when you people use that? I don't. But his view of him as a player does it take anything away from him? No, because that. I mean, I know I won the Premier League, but that was the what chucked at me for not going to Man United. Imagine all the trophies. I mean, he. I'm not any less happier when I'm 52 years of age that I haven't won all those trophies that the Man United boys won. I was I was more than happy with my decision and going to Newcastle and achieving what I did. I know what Tottenham means to him. He'll have a statue. He'll have their record. He'll have any. He'll have loads will of he have records. Your record? Probably, yeah. Yeah, he probably will. Yeah. What will you do when he gets it? Will you sit down, and have a cigar, and a strong drink, and just reflect on your career? I'll tell you what they'll have to do. They'll have to sack that graphics fella at match of the day. He's putting that. Two hundred and six. The only one we've got, he, isn't he's it? Going. Yeah. I'll be the first to shake. It's going to go one day, so I'll be the first to shake his hand and congratulate him. Lovely. I've had it for thirty odd years. I'm anyway, so bored of it. He's bored of it. It's fine. <laughs> okay, let's go to this position here because um, there might be a bit more of a debate around these two positions up front. Alan, who would be your number one? Saka. Definitely uh, having a great time with Arsenal. Um, has proved he can handle it mentally after what happened to him uh, in the Euros. Came back stronger. Um, so for me, definitely on that right side for him. Pace, direct, can create, can score. So Saka. Excellent choice. 
and for you, Jim? The reason I agree is because I think it all revolves around Harry Kane. He's the absolute guarantee. He's going to play every game. And Harry Kane, as we know, Alan's mentioned, he's always coming deeper for the ball. As, as he's getting older, he's fantastic at getting on the ball. But then you need people running in behind. You need pacing behind Harry Kane. Because if you have another player in that position who is coming for the ball as well, you've got no penetration in behind. So for me, the two people you'd look at straight away are Foden and Saka. But I actually think Foden comes deeper for the ball at different times. He's a great player, and Alan mentioned before, he's the other world-class player in the squad. But he hasn't really shown that for England. I think Saka's done more for England than Phil Foden has, so if it was one or the other on that side, I would go for Saka. I like that we were getting a full demonstration there, like it was Monday Night Football. <coughs> yes. I feel like you're going to get the touch screen out any second. <laughs> <laughs> right, Saka on the right. We don't have them on Match of the Day, so it's all <laughs> no, right. That's you, you lot don't like standing up. You're just comfortable sitting in your sofa. On the left, who are we going for? Jamie, why don't you start with this one? Well, it's two for me. It's whether then Foden plays on this side or Raheem Sterling. And again, I go back to, if you're asking me, is Phil Foden a better player than Saka? Yes. Is he a better player than Raheem Sterling? Yes. But it hasn't quite happened for him in England shirt. Now, I've seen Phil Foden actually being devastating on, on this left side and the pace he's got to run in behind. But Raheem Sterling's done it for England and that's sort of the conundrum for me. Sterling is very penetrating, making runs in behind Kane. It's, but he's struggled at Chelsea, he's found it tough and it just feels like Phil Foden has to ha be in this team, he's too big of a talent. So I would start with Phil Foden on this side and I'd be pushing him to make more runs in behind but I think uh, you know, for Gareth he may look at Sterling but I, I think Foden, but he started the last Euros tournament, don't forget Foden and Saka ended up taking his place because he just didn't perform in an English shirt. We need to see the Phil Foden of Man City in an English shirt. Okay. Foden would be mine as well. I just I don't think you can leave him out. I think yeah. he's that he's that good. He's got that much ability. Um, he is one of our star players, I think. Um, and again, very much like Harry, he has to do well. Um, I get I understand the pace bit. Uh, we've got to get him behind. But with with the form that Raheem's in and really has struggled, I, without doubt for me, um, Phil Foden would start. So if, if that front three of Saka Kane and Foden excites me. Me too, that's a really strong front three actually, I really enjoy that one. Now, we're just gonna start with this one here, the holding midfield role. Are you both going for Declan Rice? Yes. Yeah. Why? I don't think there's anyone better for England in that position. And I think because of our insecurities uh, in the centre off positions, he will have to give a helping hand out and give BR a little bit of protection in there. Um, so Declan Rice for me, without a doubt. I think for him as a player, you know, West Ham fans may, may not like it, but he is a guy who should be in teams that are competing for the league title and the Champions League. He's that good. I think he's absolutely fantastic. He reminds me of Roy Keane. That's the player I sort of, when I look at sort of Roy Keane and how he played football, it was not just defined in one position. He was, he was an all-round midfield player, if you like, and that's where I see him alongside. Just a bit nicer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Roy. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that, you can, yeah. Right. Uh, okay, let's go here. What are, you, what are you thinking? Why don't you go first? Bellingham. Nice. Bellingham. Uh, this, this guy could light the tournament up. He could be one of the superstars of the tournament. We've, we've seen what he's doing in the Champions League. Uh, we've seen what he's doing uh, in German football, the Bundesliga. And we've seen flashes of that for England. Um, and he could be in the England team for a, for many, many years ahead and he could light up this tournament. He's, he's one that could be a superstar. Mm. And he's captaining that side as well. He, yeah. for, for the age that he is, for being such a baby, yeah. it's almost like he's, he's not overwhelmed in any situation. And the courage he, alongside a lot of other young English players, to go abroad at such a young age, uh, sample a different sort of lifestyle, style of football, I think it's been a fantastic move for him. It looks like he's going to get another move, I would imagine, in Where? the summer. Liverpool, hopefully. I know he's a Liverpool <laughs> fan, but if we can Doesn't make... Does anyone Champions League football? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, I think he's a player who Real Madrid will want. Barcelona will want, uh, every top club in England will want. And he looks, well, him and Rice is England's midfield for the next five or six years. I don't think anyone's looking at them and thinking they're going to take those positions, to be honest. And they probably both be battling over who's the future captain after Harry Kane. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Jude Bellingham, 
I mean, I, I said Rice reminds me of Roy Keane. Jude Bellingham reminds me of Stephen Gerrard at that age, where you just you think he could, you know, score a goal at any time, create something at any time. And uh, yeah, I agree with Alan. He could light up that tournament. Okay, he's going to go there then. Jamie, who do you want there? We, we we haven't got midfield players in abundance. Uh, we we had Calvin Phillips in the last squad. Jordan Henderson didn't make it through injury. We're now two years on. I think Jordan Henderson will be in the squad. I think he finds it difficult to be in the team right now. I mean, the only one because the game is a run and it's a game we should win would be Mason Mount. Uh, because I think he's a, he's a creative player, but he also gives you that work ethic off the ball, you know, closing down, pressing people. And I just don't think we have too many there. But if I'm being honest, that midfield I would pick in here for the Iran game, I don't see that as a midfield for England going forward in that tournament to come up against top opposition. Okay. Uh, Mason Mount's a shout. Would you like to disagree or agree with that, Alan? I can't disagree too much with it. I would I would chuck Madison in there as well. Madison would without doubt be in my squad. Um, I think he offers something different. But for the Iran game, I'm afraid I have to re agree with the, uh, with Mount in there. Um, I like who he is. I like what he can offer. Um, but definitely, I would look at, at putting Madison in in, in at some stage because yeah. he offers something slightly different. I in think. the squad or the team? In the in the team, I would definitely have him in the squad. But for the first game, but wouldn't that be the perfect game? Possibly, yeah. I would. I would. It wouldn't bother me if Mount or Madison was in there. Um, but I, I can't argue against Mount. I, would, I, I do. I do like Madison as another option. Would you have Madison in the squad? Yes. Would you have him in the team at no. any point? No. no. I don't. <laughs> if I'm being honest, though, when I see this team getting all attacking players and it looks really exciting, England can't win the World Cup with that team. Right. Why? It's too offensive. It, it, it's too open. You know. We've rightly said the centre backs are not our strongest position. Mm. You'd need more than Declan Rice just sitting there. And if you, if you had really flair players like Bellingham and Man going forward, this is for the Iran game. But yeah. you'd have to be a lot more pragmatic if England wanted to go further in the tournament. Okay, guys, we're going to move to left back now. Um, Jamie, why don't you pick this one first? I go for Luke Shaw. He's got himself back into the Manchester United team. He was the the England left back or left wing back in the Euros, and he scored in the final, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. first so, half. So you know, so. Then what happened? <laughs> uh, yeah. But no, I, I'd go for Luke Shaw. I think he's always had that potential to dominate that position for England. <clears throat> Hasn't quite happened for him for different reasons at Manchester United, but they always go back to him. Even if managers brought in a different left back at different times, they always go back to Luke Shaw. And I think he's England's best left back by, by a street. Trippier. Um, I would have, I would find Trippier a place in the in the team whether it's right back or left back. Why? Um, because he's that good. Is he? Yeah. Has he played for Newcastle? He's, then? Uh, brilliant. Trippier's he's been the game changer for Newcastle. He's he's better than Walker defensively. He's better than Trent defensively. And he's better than Rhys James defensively. He scored set pieces, free kicks. He can put the ball on the money in terms from a corner, and. That's why I'd have him in the team. Set pieces will be hugely important, as you know. England have been successful with set pieces. Um, I don't think we'll have to do too much defence defending anyway in that Iran game. So if he's not right back, he's without doubt left back. No, I don't see that at all. I, I see Kieran Tippi as a very good Premier League player. The players were talking about him being up against Kyle Walker, multiple champion. Uh, league titles, Trent Alexander-Arnold, the same Champions League winner, Rhys James, Champions League winner, Luke Shaw, just the left foot. I think when you're playing against the sort of weaker... Liga winner, we, Trippier, yeah, yeah. not just Premier League. But, like, yeah, I'm well aware of that. And then you got rid of him and give him to Newcastle. And then you've got Luke Shaw, you're playing against weaker Sam, opposition. Much trouble this year. You're giving weaker, weaker opposition. <laughs> and that left foot going forward, I think, is a massive difference. I, I don't understand... I mean, I, I like Kieran Trippier as a player. I don't understand the the left back thing, I don't even know where that's come from. I know he actually played there for England uh, in the last tournament, but I think he's a good, solid Premier League player and uh, I don't think he should be getting in a full back. He'd be in the, in, the, in the squad, no doubt, but I don't see how he plays in this team. Oh no, this means I've got to make the final decision <laughs> between Luke Shaw and Kieran Trippier and do I effectively prefer Jamie or Alan? We've made it, we've made it easy for you up to now, haven't we? <laughs> wow. I would say, because my dad's a Geordie, I'm going to go for Kieran oh, no. <laughs> yes. So you like left back with my foot? <laughs> yeah, I do. I love, I've always loved a left back with a right foot. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to move uh, to the goalkeeping position. And it took, what, that was our 10th try to get you two to disagree. So, do you think you're going to agree on the keeper? Who, who's your number one? 
I think it has to be Pickford because of... Well, he's, he's been superb for England and, and Gareth um, in, in, the, in when he's played. And it's not as if he's having a terrible time with, uh, with Everton. He's pulling off some magnificent saves. So I get why Gareth, he's one of Gareth's go-to guys. Well, he, even, even when he has been criticised, Gareth still picked him. Feels like there's a book and, and, und- and I understand mm. that. So yeah, Pickford for me. There's there's a there's a big shout for the other two in Pope or Ramsdale. I mean, Pope's been a game changer for Newcastle. Not as not as good with his uh, off off the deck as um, as Pickford is. So yeah, Pickford for me. Pickford's a shoe in. I think he's he's one of those just behind Harry Kane where it is almost a guarantee to play. Mm. I think Gareth Southgate would always pick him. He's never let England down. At times, his form's been up and down for Everton, going back a few years, but. I think since Frank Lampard come in, he's been outstanding for uh, for Everton as well, and also his ability with you know with the ball at his feet. Yeah. All right, Pickford goes there. There we go. I'm having second thoughts about the left back position, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you can still change it. It's really difficult, isn't it? You're playing a run. You want a right foot at that left back. Yeah. He's letting me convince. Really? Him. Is, there, is there any more cases? Who's going to be gonna here? Take set pieces. Jude Bellingham, Mason Mount. Okay. That's a good point. Forward. <laughs> there we go. All right, I've changed my mind. Luke Shaw's going in, but it gives you a bit of an insight into how difficult it is to be the England manager, really, doesn't it? Are we happy with the 11 apart from the left back position? Yeah, I think we've agreed on, on most things. I mean, I, I wouldn't be unhappy with Shaw in there at left back. I don't, don't want to be I'm not disrespectful to him, but I think that's as. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I will play four, as we said. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that team. Do, do, do you think that team going forward can win a World Cup? Did that actual set, that system, how offensive we are in midfield? Do you think that's the way to win a tournament? No, I didn't, I, I'm not convinced it would. If, if they were playing France in the last 16 or, or whoever, a, a top team in the quarter final and I, I don't think he would play so it could be Holland in the last actually, 16 yeah I think that would be it that um I wouldn't be too worried about a, a, a Holland or maybe maybe France I would be I'd be worried about or if it was further a on a quarter final whoever, whoever it may be how would you change it I would have a bit more protection I wouldn't be comfortable defensively so I would have to have some more protection in front of the yeah, in front of that uh, that back four mm-hmm. whether he, he would put Henderson in there alongside Rice so it would still be a back to, four? Uh, yeah, Maybe I would, four, yeah. Four, two, three, one. Yeah. I'd go for a back three in those games because I don't think the actual midfield we've got, you could put Jordan in there, but in terms of having that energy to sort of protect the back uh, four, so I think Alan's right, if you go to a back four, you've you definitely almost got to have two players who don't move. Yeah. And I don't think we've got enough of those in the squad. So I think you could still have Rice almost sitting alone if you like and still getting help from midfield but as long as you had three behind him and maybe one of the wing backs so you've always got a four or five players behind the ball so that's that's why I would go for the back three I think Garrett's had success doing that against big nations certainly in the last tournament he did that in the final uh, against Italy obviously we lost the game I think he did it against Germany so whenever you come against top opposition it's a system he's always gone back to what would be success for this England team in this tournament the World Cup and <coughs> What would Gareth need to secure the next contract? I think semi-final. I don't. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't see us being. I don't get. I don't see us getting to a semi or the final. I don't see us going as far as we have done in the last two tournaments because I don't fancy us defensively. I hope I'm wrong. Um, what does Gareth have to do? He'll he'll decide that. I think he'll decide when he leaves England, and I think that's the right decision for him because of his. Success, if you like, and, and <coughs> where he's where he's taken this England team. He's earned it. So, yeah, he has earned it. I mean, I don't go along with all the crap about uh, that. He's sometimes he's negative or the the criticism. If you look at if you look at a lot of European countries leading up to this World Cup, a lot of them are struggling. Mm. There has to be a reason for that. England are one of them. So, and you get on a bit of a snowball um, snowball effect if you get confidence in the first three games, and you just never know. So, a quarter-final for me, would, and then he's got England to a quarter-final, a semi-final and a final. I mean, look at where we were before that. We were, we were garbage before that. So he's got us to that final, to that semi-final. I think it should be his decision when he chooses to leave England, not the other way around. Do you agree with that? It should be his decision, but if I was Gareth Southgate and this, no matter what happened in this tournament, I would walk away. 
you can just feel the, and, and Alan knows this better than anyone, when they're sort of the feeling, whether it's the supporters, the media, just starts to turn on the manager. Mm. And I think it's been completely bang out of order, the reaction that we've seen in the last 12 months. The, what the England manager has done now, Gareth Southgate, puts him right up there, you know, probably just behind Sir Alf Ramsey uh, in what he's done. You think of other managers who've done really well, Bobby Robson got to a semi-final, Terry Venables. But he's done it twice in two tournaments, semi-final and final. So he's done a brilliant job. But for me, I, I think if, if England don't get to a semi-final, I think there'll be a lot of negativity around, around the England manager, the England team. And I don't agree with that. But I think it'd be best for all if, uh, if Gareth moved on after the tournament. Because I think he just get this tournament out the way. He doesn't need that negativity, really, because he's done an absolutely fantastic job. There we go, guys. That's your 11 against Iran for England, the first game of the World Cup. Not too many disagreements. I think that's quite a good team. Are you guys, are you happy? Happy with that, Al? Happy with that. That team should win against Iran. <laughs> Excellent. Should be funny. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Still friends. Oh, I love it. Well done. I still think they're a couple years yeah. away. When the likes of Bellingham get in the team, find a, a role for Do you think Walker Alexander should go? Yes. He's the most underrated player in yeah, the Premier yeah. League like for, for years. I like and him. people say maybe not have the mobility, but he's just... I like him. He works hard. Yeah. 